Good morning, friends. Uh, I hope all of you are doing good. In this video, I'm going to tell you about uh, the 3PL concept. Many people uh, ask like, what is 3PL? What happens in 3PL warehouse? So the different, different, different scenarios are there. I want to tell you one uh, inbound scenario. So how does uh, the 3PL cases work? Okay. So let's take um, an example. Your company is using only material management. There is no warehouse management, but you have a 3PL warehouse. You set up a 3PL warehouse where a third party uh, system will manage that entire 3PL warehouses, but your main system is SAP system. So let's take it, um, maybe this is the 3PL warehouse. Okay, let's take it. This is 3PL, third party logistics uh, warehouse we can say. This is your 3PL warehouse. So 3PL warehouse uh, is doing the your operations of like receiving any trucks will come there. Okay. So the trucks can come here and receiving all those things are happening with your um, 3PL warehouse. So now uh, when you see this uh, data, for example, let's take it. This is your 3PL warehouse where the operations are happening. And this is your company. So the company is having the procurement, all the activities. Let's give some color. This is your plant, the where your main operations are happening. The plant uh, is happening here. The plant. So the plant uh, where you are creating. This I'm I'm going to tell you about a simple uh, process. You created a purchase order, you created a purchase order, created a purchase order and sent to the vendor, okay, and uh, the 3PL warehouse uh, storage location in that uh, the S lock is, S lock equals to the 3PL uh, warehouse, 3PL warehouse, maybe you have one S lock called 3PL warehouse. You are just given that um, 3PL warehouse related S lock. Okay, you have given 3PL warehouse related S lock. So is it visible or we can increase the size of the font? Okay. So I'm just telling you about the one process goods received. Okay, let's take the goods received. How does it happen? Maybe goods received. Okay, we'll see the goods received process. How does it happen? So you create a purchase order and with the storage location as 3PL warehouse, 3PL warehouse may be available uh, in one kilometer or two kilometer or else in the same place. Okay, the distance doesn't matter. You can give that way. If you have a different uh, location, uh, then the address can be maintained at the storage location level so that the vendor can know that way, which location he has to deliver the goods. The purchase order is created. And if you are using uh, confirmation control, then the inbound delivery is created inbound delivery also created so first purchase order after that uh, you have uh, got the second document called in inbound delivery so once the vendor has sent you the inbound delivery on so and so date for example let's take it march 28 uh, 2023 we are going to get 20 pieces of stock okay so now this um the stock is arrived so here there are different things like few companies are using just a manual thing they will send uh, every day Today, we are expecting these three or four inbound deliveries numbers. So they will maintain the inbound delivery. These companies will not have a uh, like a stringent um, 
interface things okay or else you can use the an interface whenever inbound delivery is created you will send one uh, api for example you can send like a flat file or else you can send the rf call the data will be sent to the system so they have the data of inbound delivery numbers so so inbound let me use the word ibd okay they got ibd01 ibd02 okay ibd02 ibd03 okay so all these documents are uh, available with them like i mentioned that you can use an interface automatically whenever inbound delivery is created with the based on the delivery date everything you can send an interface or else manually you can send every day for them only the inbound delivery information so letter uh, the truck has received here okay let's take uh, the 3pl warehouse uh, got this truck we have any kind of uh, images here icons nature doors you will have a vehicles Let's use vehicles. Maybe take this truck. Okay. So, for example, there is a truck and uh, you received the stock. Let's go the goods are arrived here. Maybe we can keep it uh, small, small goods boxes. You received uh, different, different type of boxes of materials. So, the materials are received here. Material A, B and C. Okay. A, B, and C. So after they receive, they have uh, storage bins. 3PL warehouse will have their uh, the own um, storage bins. Okay, let's take it here, some racking. So they can have this kind of uh, storage bins. Maybe we can see B04, B03, B02, B01. Okay, just a rack you can check. Maybe C04, C03. Okay, so you have this kind of a racks available here and uh, ABC material. They can send this ABC material to the respective bin. Okay, so they can take this ABC bin and uh, they place there. So once in their internal system, uh, once they confirm that one, uh, inbound delivery 01 received with ABC material, maybe quantity of uh, 5, 3, 4 and all, then that information will be sent to SAP. Like I mentioned, either uh, mostly nowadays uh, all 3PL companies will use either IDOC or something. Mostly IDOC we will be using. So this information will be sent to SAP. So here, auto goods received will be posted. Auto goods received. Okay. Either you can use inbound delivery or, um, for example, without inbound delivery also, uh, you can do that one. So we have different, different types of uh, IDOC types are there. One of the popular thing is like MB GMCR 03. Uh, MB GMCR is the IDOC message type. This IDOC message type, one of the things uh, which I see in uh, one of the 3PL warehouses, you can get and uh, get, do the goods receipt automatically in the back end okay so mbgmcr is the idoc message type which you can use to do the auto goods receipt so this system is going to keep the stock in the bin and that bin information also won't be known to the warehouse uh, in the plant because the plant mainly knows that uh, plant is mainly keen about how much stock i received and uh, whether it is received uh, against that inbound delivery how much quantity it is received those things only so here we are getting here how, how auto inbound delivery how auto goods is telling ibd01 quantity like material c a b c so just giving an example how the information will be sent ibd01 material a b c and uh, the quantity 
maybe a a quantity three pieces of three pieces b okay b maybe b you you have a uh, 10 pieces okay c you have uh, received uh, five pieces okay. like this you can uh, get to know about the quantities based on the quantity system will post the goods received automatically this is about one receive process how interface will work how 3pl 3pl will take care about the material okay three pieces available in c04 and five ten pieces available in b04 all the information will be available in the 3pl warehouse and mainly the plant is uh, getting the stock the goods received is completed inbound delivery material quantity the date all the information will be sent to sap it will be automatically posted okay so as part of the initial setup based on the requirements based on the budget of the warehouse uh, the entire project and all we we interface the material master because they should have the information right we interface the data like um, material vendor okay those masters also uh, we can send to from this sap system to for example this is sap okay we are using sap here SAP and here maybe something 3PL, 3PL system. So here, uh, whatever we are sending, like uh, material, vendor, the, all the required information, we need to interface if you are expecting completely robustic uh, interface thing. So material, vendor, even the purchase order is created, the purchase order number you can send, or else one inbound delivery number you can send. So based on inbound delivery, they will uh, send the codes. But we need to have a validation in 3PL system. If each inbound delivery is completed, they should not do the duplicate uh, goods receipt for the same inbound delivery. Then IBD01, again, they do second thing, then it will come and fail in SAP. Okay. So those kind of validations we need to take care whenever you are working with 3PL warehouses. So what data we are sending? So a 3PL warehouse, what data they need? They need material, they need vendor, they need inbound delivery number or purchase order number to do the goods receipt. Okay, and also they should have a validation in their system. A purchase order quantity of 100. Once the 100 quantity is completed, system will not allow to do the additional goods received for them. If they don't keep any tolerance limit, they need to ask them, we received five more quantity for the same PO. Can you amend the PO? Then this plant, uh, the main SAP team has to change the PO, PO quantity to 100 to 105. So that 105 quantity will be interfaced to 3PL. So either you can change with the PO or the CH. Okay, purchase order you can see P O R T C R one and P O R D C H. I'm giving uh, IDOC message types. Okay, IDOC type is different. IDOC message type. IDOC type will have this zero uh, three C H zero three ending. Some numbers will be there. So I, I'm talking about IDOC message uh, type so that you can understand. So this is the way uh, you can use this uh, IDOC message types to send the information of uh, P O. Material we have math mass. Okay. So this is the way how you work on 3PL interfaces. So 3PL means only there is an operation happens in the 3PL warehouse. The information will be sent to SAP or uh, the main system. So automatically here there is no involvement of uh, any person for this course because the entire operation is happening here. So only we are updating our main. ERP system. This is the purchase order. This is the goods received to happen. This PO is completed. No more open PO. So this kind of uh, information only we can track in this system, but we don't have to uh, do that inventory things. At what level you can understand now for the goods received, how does it happen? The material has come. They do the goods received and that information will be sent uh, every five minutes or immediately based on the setup. Mostly you can send the immediate information. So the inbound delivery quantity, everything will come here and you do the goods receipt. Okay. There are inbound delivery specific uh, IDOC types also there that also you can utilize it. But anyway, it is IM level, right? So you can use this MBGMCR03. MBGMCR is the message type. MBGMCR03 is the IDOC type. So this is the way how 3PL works. The same thing you can... Uh, 
imagine or you can just uh, map for uh, transfer posting is happening anything here if you have different locations or else how the sales process can happen you again same way you send the sales order and outbound delivery then they do the goods issue the goods issue quantity outbound delivery everything will be sent to sap then you post the goods issue okay so in this way the different inventory transactions happen at the 3pl warehouse and uh, the data will be sent to sap here the inventory management is become in the back end for sap here okay the front end is uh, creating po creating inbound delivery or even inbound delivery also if you are using um, confirmations that inbound delivery also will be created automatically so this is the way how 3pl works and uh, i hope uh, this video has given you an insight how does 3pl work and what are the roles of a consultant in this 3pl so when you're working as a wm consultant or mm consultant for this project so what kind of uh, role you will have it first of all where, what are the processes you need to interface like material vendor you have to send okay you need to keep it in interface the material data always come from sap to this third party system vendor data and purchase order data so no creation no changes are possible of purchase order in 3pl sap only will make any changes of quantity or anything uh, material changes everything so the data will come to 3pl 3pl is just store the data from sap okay and who is the owner of inventory inventory 3pl will own that uh, inventory 100 quantity of po received 95 or received 92 or any kind of cancellation or any changes all those things the inventory related 3pl will take the ownership so when you are uh, designing the process you need to think all these things like cancellation uh, changes of quantity okay so good receipt is done for 90 they cannot send one more good receipt um, for 30 quantity because if po is only 100 so that kind of validations we need to test and uh, changing 90 quantity they cannot change to 85 it will come and fail in sap okay there we have to use the gr cancellation or uh, the reversal okay what kind of process you are going to follow for example you, you don't want yellow partial thing then they have to cancel 90 and then do the fresh receipt of 85 okay or else vendor return process if you have that uh, 122 related moment type uh, scenario also you have to keep it so during this process the material vendor you have to send and uh, here you have you have to take care about the gr gr cancellation written okay even if you have uh, in a sales process uh, the sales related transactions you need to if you have any customer return receipt that process so all these processes are with a similar kind of IDOC types but you need to keep it as part of your testing this is way how a 3pl works and uh, I explained good receipt process. And with this, you can uh, work on other processes also. I hope uh, this video has given you enough understanding about 3PL Warehouse. And if I come across any different, different kind of 3PL businesses, definitely I will make videos in the future and keep sharing our uh, videos to reach more people, to help more member of people. Have a good day.